When we talk about the state of the sun, we're really talking about what the sun is doing um, in terms of shorter and longer term cycles and what we can expect going forward. As you can see here, these are the approximately 11 year sunspot cycles going back to the uh, going back to the 50s. And we can see that, as many of you know, we are on a decreasing trend of solar activity, uh, which is just one of the many indices uh, that really does seem to indicate that we are heading uh, heading down for a period of, of much lower solar activity than we've seen for the past few decades uh, or centuries. Looking over longer time scales, we can absolutely see that um, you know we have been in an extraordinarily high period of solar activity, something that we haven't seen for uh, you know the better part of 10,000 years, uh, if not more. And you can also see that there's a, f a pretty good regularity to the spikes. Uh, it's not like, um, you know, even though the highs aren't always as high and the lows aren't always as low, it's not like we have some spikes that are 10 times wider than others. Sometimes they're close enough together that they might appear to be a wide spike, but actually you can see that it's really just the spikes being close together. And so you can also tell that given the size of most of the spikes, the one that we're in now is about over, and so we have another... Uh, sunspot indication here that perhaps the sun is ready to take a dive and go the other direction. We can also look at that over uh, slightly different time scales here, this going back to the late 1800s. Uh, up top you see what's known as the butterfly diagram and down at the bottom we have um, we have the sunspot number and you can see that the uh, really high sunspot number that we saw two slides ago there at the end of the 50s, start of the 60s, is actually the highest of that entire period as we come back to, to this slide here. And you can see that you know this is, shows a long-term trend up and then the trend's starting to come back down. And we can see that both up top in the butterfly diagram and down at the bottom in the sunspots. You can see that not only was the sunspot number extraordinarily high there in the middle of the last century, but it, it really was uh, you know a lot more densely packed. Uh, it, um, at times extended uh, to more extreme latitudes than, than it otherwise did. Um, and something really interesting there, take a look at cycle 20, um, which, you know, right in the middle of 1970 there is sort of right in the middle. You can actually see both down at the bottom and up at the top in the butterfly diagram how uh, a weaker cycle actually looks, um, you know, in the midst of other ones so uh, th that are significantly higher. Anyway, let's come to here, and uh, this is, of course, our most underrated magnetic fields in the entire solar system. These are the solar polar fields. North is blue, south is red, and um, these are the most underrated because it is, in fact, these that drive the sunspot cycle. These drive uh, how many and where the sunspots are, how energetic and how active they are, um, the character, both physical and magnetic, of the heliospheric current sheet created by the solar wind. It determines where the coronal holes are, where the plasma filaments are, etc. It's pretty much um, an unseen guiding force sort of affecting almost everything in terms of space weather and geomagnetic phenomena that we track here on a daily basis. And as you can see here, we have yet another indication that things are on their way down. Looking back over just the last two years, and you saw this in the last uh, deeper look where we investigated its connection to earthquakes, this is 2014 and 2015 here, and you can see that we have ended polar reversal and we're on the trend back up towards polar maximum, aka sunspot minimum. But even still, uh, the, the southern fields there in red uh, are... Um, you know, e weaker than we would expect them to be, which means the northern fields up in blue are extraordinarily weak, and that they are almost anemically weak. That yellow line there running sort of through the middle is the uh, the average uh, or the combined, uh, you know, polar fields of the sun, and it has been predominantly negative with the, uh, with the southern hemisphere being much stronger than the north. Another way we can look at the decreasing uh, magnetism of the polar fields of the sun is by taking absolute magnitude. So imagine we were to sort of fold this slide right here uh, long ways around the zero baseline and basically take everything that's in the negative, make it positive, and add it to what's on the other side there. What you end up getting is something that looks like this. 
and this really shows the absolute magnitude uh, magnetism of our star and you can really see here again how um, things are going down and even on our trend back up from polar uh, polar minimum here which as you can see lasted much much longer than any of the previous cycles uh, two to three times longer actually uh, even as it's coming back up uh, it's still uh, yet to reach up to the levels where uh, we would expect it to be even during the last cycle which was incredibly weak itself. Here again is the current sunspot cycle in pink compared to the last three. Um, you can see the, the previous cycle to this one in red there slightly weaker than the two before. Uh, just another way of looking at our trend downward. Uh, what we have uh, in the next three charts is the current solar cycles activity compared to what we expect during a given cycle and it's a fair time to do this because solar maximum is pretty much over and we are on our way down uh, towards uh, solar sunspot minimum and so we'll be seeing le uh, fewer and fewer of these types of events. So in terms of radio blackouts from solar flares the event levels uh, a level one radio blackout is a, an M class flare M5 is level two X-class solar flare is a level 3, X-10 is level 4, and X-20 or higher, a mega flare, would be a level 5. You can see in the average solar cycle about how many of these we expect, and you can see we are well, well below where we, where we should be. Uh, that goes for geomagnetic storms as well. These are caused by things like CMEs from solar flares, from erupting filaments, or caused by uh, heliospheric uh, phenomena such as co uh, coronal holes or the sector boundaries or co-rotating regions that accompany them. And you can see we are well below, uh, well below average here, uh, especially uh, when you're looking at um, the level three and level four storms, which is really when things start to get interesting for power grids, electrical fires, the airline industry, etc. You can see that um, perhaps we've been extraordinarily lucky. Um, going down to solar radiation storms, these of course are most uh, mostly a concern for high altitude flights for astronauts and for those of the polar region but even still they they are able to produce similar uh, types of you know dangerous phenomena as geomagnetic storms and as you can see we're well below average here too uh, coming back we are um, we are looking at about a 200 year um, window to these spikes and a 400 year um, window in between when they dip lower than they otherwise would have or lower than they did the previous cycle. And what this really seems to suggest is that regardless of um, what sort of cycle you're looking at, whether it's a whether you're gauging the 11 year sunspot cycles against one another or you're looking over thousands of years like this, we have undoubtedly been an extraordinarily high solar activity uh, for at least the last 100, 150 years or so, um, much more so not only over the last grand cycle of about 400 years, but over the last few thousand years as well. So that's something to consider, especially uh, when thinking about climate change.